Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, everybody, it's Ophira. August is just around the corner, and so are two great live tapings of Ask Me Another. On August 2nd, our special guest is comedian Cameron Esposito. And on August 16th, Natasha Leone from Orange is the New Black will be joining us. Tickets and information is at amatickets.org. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. You know, the Republican presidential convention is a memory. And now, it's on to the Democratic National Convention. Philadelphia is all over the news. But if the news is too much to keep up with, don't keep up with it. Just keep up with NPR's Politics Podcast. The NPR team will be at the conventions doing quick daily episodes first thing every morning. So know what's happening and what it all means without that cable news hangover. Subscribe to the NPR Politics Podcast at npr.org slash podcasts or on the NPR One app. From NPR and WNYC, live from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia, Ask Me Another. Here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Our VIPs play a couple on HBO's Looking, a show about looking for happiness, your place in the world, and of course, love. And I know what it's like to spend a lot of time looking for Mr. Right. You go through years of dating Mr. Wrongs. Uh, some of them that you find out are Mr. Wrong because they were also looking for Mr. Right. <laughs> and in TV land, you hope that search for love lasts at least six seasons. But in real life, <laughs> you hope you find the one just before last call. We're in for a real San Francisco treat with our VIPs, Jonathan Groff and Raul Castillo. We'll be talking to them later in the show, but let's welcome right now our one-man house band, Jonathan Colton. Hello, everybody. And our first game is called Thank You Notes. Here are our contestants, Harmony Barker and Trevor Silverstein. Welcome to you both. Harmony, you have been known to use Lord of the Rings quotes and historical trivia to turn away potential suitors. Um, yes. So when you're on a dating site yes. uh, and you list Lord of the Rings as an interest, you get some interesting come-ons. Sure. Um, a, a standout of this was a dang girl, you got the attention of my Bera Dour which oh. is a spiky two-pronged tower with a flaming eye on the top. Sure it is. And I felt of the Lord of the Rings-related anatomical humor, that was not the best that this person could do. Well, it's um, a humble brag. And I, and I, I told him so. Uh, he responded with a <laughs> gif of the tower falling down. <laughs> Trevor, how would you respond uh, to someone's dating profile such as Harmony that says that she's really into Lord of the Rings? Well, I'd say, why don't you come over? We'll hang out and we'll watch it, you know? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's the right answer. That is the right answer? <laughs> Trevor, are you uh, seeing anyone? I have a girlfriend, yeah. She couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you cards. Have you ever received one? Uh, a few. A few? How long do you keep them? Let's figure this little bit of etiquette out right now. How long do you think you could, should keep a thank you card? Uh, I think if it's funny, I'll usually keep it. But if it's just a simple thank you, I kind of toss it. Oh, so it depends on the, the content. I think so. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah, Good. Yeah. Judgy. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Harmony, what do you think? I am known for keeping cards forever, especially if the card is sparkly. Oh. It stays in a drawer forever until I have to move, and then I throw it out. There you go. A little tip for you, Trevor. Yeah. So in this game, we're actually going to send some long overdue thank you notes, and all you have to do is identify the sender. Let's go to Jonathan Colton for an example, please. All right. So here's one that we found. Dear Pope Julius II, thank you for hiring me to paint the Sistine Chapel. I'm glad that you agreed that Adam did not need pants. Sincerely, who are we talking about? And of course, you would say... Michelangelo. 
Okay, so we're looking for the sender of these thank you notes, and the winner will move on to our Ask Me One More final round at the end of the show. Here's your first one. Dear Ronnie, Spasibo for suggesting that I tear down that wall. Berlin seems so much roomier with it gone. Next, we should steam clean that iron curtain. Sincerely, who? Harmony. Gorbachev. That is correct. Yes, well done. He was a real jokester, as you can tell from that thank you card. Funny guy. <laughs> a funny guy. Funny guy. Hammer and tickle. That's what they Whoa! called him. <laughs> I don't think that's why they called him that. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Sergey and Larry, thank you for buying YouTube and for keeping it free. My Gangnam Style video has been played over two billion times on your site. Take that, keyboard cat. <laughs> Harmony. Psy? Psy is correct. Dear Kanye, thanks for all the support. I appreciate your award show interruptions on my behalf. Just saying, this grown woman can speak for herself. Don't make me go Solange on your ass. <laughs> Sincerely, who? Harmony. Beyonce. That's right. Yeah. Dear Bill Rehnquist, thanks to you and the Supreme Court for straightening out that Florida mess. That was a close one. <laughs> Al Gore sure misunderestimated me. P.S. Laura made me write this. Harmony. George W. Bush. Yes, you're right. Dear Stephanie Meyer, I can't thank you enough. Your Twilight books inspired me to write the Bella Edward fan fiction that turned into Fifty Shades of Grey. Even hardware stores are thanking me for the sales spike in duct tape and rope. Sincerely, who? Trevor. E.L. James. E.L. James. I think we found Trevor's area of expertise. <laughs> Dear Neil deGrasse Tyson, thanks a lot for leading the charge to downgrade me. Now all of the other planets make fun of me for being tiny. <laughs> Neptune can be so cruel. Harmony. Pluto. You got it. <laughs> all right, this is your last clue. This is actually a real-life thank-you note. Uh, we didn't make it up. Dear Mr. Ford, while I still have got breath in my lungs, I will tell you what a dandy car you make. I have drove Fords exclusively when I could get away with one, even if my business hasn't been strictly legal. It don't hurt anything to tell you what a fine car you got in the V8. My wife Bonnie swears by it, too. <laughs> Harmony. Clyde. That is Clyde. Yeah, Clyde Morrow. Yes. Puzzle Guru, Archung, how did our contestants do? I have another thank you note. Dear Trevor, thank you for playing, but Harmony is moving on to our Ask Me One More Final Round at the end of the show. Let's welcome our next two contestants, David Nickasher and Zach Zofer. Now, you're both actors, Zach, do a lot of voice acting work. And your dream is, an, is a children's cartoon villain role? That's correct. Can I get a little sample? <clears throat> Those infernal Power Rangers have crossed me for the last time. <laughs> I like it. Well done. Uh, David, you do stage plays, but you are also really into professional wrestling. Huge I am. Fan. Don't hold it against me. Okay. Have you ever thought of uh, what, who you would be as a wrestler? I'd be like the Wikipedia warrior. I would bore my <laughs> opponent to death with information. That's my sleeper hold. Information is my sleeper hold. <laughs> All right, so this should be easy as to uh, actors. Can you describe yourself in three alliterative words, David? Uh, tall, talkative, and uh, another reason I'd be a terrible professional wrestler, ticklish. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I, that, that'd be it. That would I be mean, the most adorable wrestling match of all time. That'd be great. Zach? Cruel, cunning, and calculating Commodore catastrophe. Yeah, all right. It's been in my head for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> finally out. It's finally out. <laughs> now the world knows. This game is called Single Word Cinema Stumpers. All the answers are going to be movies with only one word in the title. And our clues will be plot summaries in which all of the words start with the same sound 
as the one word title. Okay, so don't worry, Puzzle Guru Art Chung, please give these fine men an example. So if we said, ripped roustabout rumbles with rival in ring, rallies from rags to riches, that would be a plot summary for Rocky. Oh, well, okay, yeah, you guys seem wrestler. fine with this. <laughs> we got it. I had this line to read, don't freak out, but you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, all right, bring it on. <laughs> it's all good. But there will be hints if you need them, and I can repeat them as well. Got and it. the winner will, of course, move on to our Ask Me One More Final Round at the end of the show. Here we go. Cliché chronicle of criminals and crabby creative crowd carjacking and colliding conveyances in California. Zach. Crash. Crash is correct. I had that ready before you even said it. You just knew I was going to say that? It's the only one-word movie I could think of off at the top of my oh. head. <laughs> so the game for you is going to go quite downhill. We'll see. Lucky me. <laughs> Brash brogue speakers brace for brutal battles brought by browbeating British. David. Braveheart. Yeah, Braveheart. Nice. Freedom! <laughs> that was my audition. That was very good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think that's what Mel Gibson's ex-wife uh, said. No doubts. I guess we're not going to book Mel Gibson on the show. <laughs> Damsel in Divided Dystopia discovers she's dangerously different, defies death. Zach. Divergent. Divergent is perfect. <laughs> Nabobs need nutty natterings on nightly news for nicer Nielsen numbers. David. Network. That is Correct. Yes. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. There you go. You're giving me movies with great, great, like, big one oh, lines like yeah, that. Yeah, just for you. Yeah. Thank you. Hapless hipster has heart hacked. Heals with help from honey housed in handheld hardware. Her. Honey. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Zach. Her. <laughs> Droopy eared Disney darling discovers deftness for daring do despite dearth of dialogue. David. Dumbo. Yes! Wow. This is your last question. Ace Agent, acted by Affleck applies artifice to arrange attainment of Americans apprehended abroad. David. Argo. That is absolutely perfectly correct. Puzzle Guru Archung, are you blown away right now? Honestly, you guys are both the best contestants we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, only one of you can move on, and that is David. Congratulations, Thank David. You. We'll talk to the stars of HBO's series Looking, and we'll recite poetry with a guy who's a poet, and he knows it, seriously. So stick around. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and this is NPR's Ask Me Another. Support for Ask Me Another and the following message comes from Starry Station, the touchscreen router for fast Wi-Fi. Starry Station was designed to give you a better way to game, stream, and surf throughout your home. You can see your entire network at a glance, get suggestions on how to fix problems, and finally know if you're getting the internet speed you pay for. It even has parental controls that let you block usage on specific devices during certain hours of the day. So learn more about Starry Station at starry.com slash askmeanother. Hey y'all, Sam Sanders here, campaign reporter with NPR News at the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia. Want to remind you that the NPR Politics Podcast is bringing you daily episodes from the DNC all week. So you can skip the cable news hangover and get caught up on the convention with us every morning on the NPR Politics Podcast. Subscribe at npr.org slash podcast or on the NPR One app. Mm-hmm. 
You're listening to Ask Me Other from NPR and WNYC. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and with me is our house musician, Jonathan Colton. And here are our next contestants, Kevin Hood and Liz Sterin. Liz, you went to Brown for math and science. Yes. Smart. Eh. Okay. <laughs> And then you took art classes at the same time at RISD? Also true. Okay, so together, what kind of career job does that make? Is this a job interview? Could be. I think I am the best qualified person to make physics picture books. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, that's good. Kevin is a percussionist, plays drum in drum lines. I play drum, just one. Just one? Just one. In a drum line? Yes. You just get to play the one drum? Just one. Dallas Cowboys? Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. America's team. Well, yeah. Uh, uh-oh. It's been a while since we've won, guys. It's okay. <laughs> you have an encyclopedic knowledge of music, especially Swedish hip-hop. Right. How much Swedish hip-hop is there? The, a surprising amount, actually. Yeah? Uh, yeah. The other day I was walking around the Bronx with a shirt that says, they say hip-hop was born in the Bronx, but the Bronx was born in Sweden because, as a matter of fact... The man who the, who the Bronx is named after was a Swede. Oh, it says yeah? says all that on a shirt? Yeah, well, <laughs> the first part, it's, it wraps around. Small type. It it's, like, back. Yeah, yeah. it's like four points. <laughs> uh, do you like Rihanna? I don't think I've ever listened to her music. Oh, yeah? Interesting. Kevin, how about you? <laughs> I mean, Barbados is cool. Okay. That's where she's from. Barbados is where she's from. I, I know that much. That's three people we're not going to be able to book on the show. <laughs> that was a positive thing. Jonathan, how do you feel about Rihanna? I love her to death. Yeah? I think she would make a great guest on the show. I think... I agree. I think we should just do a game that's all about her songs. Why don't we do a game that's just focused sure. on Rihanna? Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's call it Hella Ellas. Yes, yes. <laughs> So we're, we're taking you way, way back to 2007, when a humble but handy accessory got its very own anthem. I'm talking, of course, about the umbrella, Ella, Ella. So I will sing verses of Rihanna's umbrella with the lyrics rewritten to be about words or names that end with an Ella sound. She's going to love that. You have to identify what I'm talking about. All right? Here we go. This fancy shoe will only fit that lady who Ran quickly from the ball And then she didn't call Though her carriage sword saw change into a gold This search will take some art But that girl, she has my heart Liz Cinderella Cinderella, yes! Your version is super soulful, man. I, I, can't, I can't do it any other way, Ophira. It's <laughs> yeah. just who I am. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. When we're outside in the warm weather, all the little bugs going to get together, flying all around trying to bite my friends. Got to make a plan before the sun descends. I prefer a non-toxic solution. I don't like chemical pollution. Got to get a safe insect repeller, a candle that's made of... Liz. Uh, citronella. Yes. I'm sorry I'm not singing the answers. Yeah, go for it. Sing the answers. Oh, no. I said I don't know the song. <laughs> there is no person that walks this earth that does not know this song. So when I say citronella, you, nothing part of your head goes, Ella, Ella, Ella. No? Really? Oh, yeah, all right, I got it. Liz, you're going to be really embarrassed when we, as a surprise, bring Rihanna out here in yeah. just a couple of minutes. She sings the final bonus round. <laughs> you need vaccines, doesn't matter how good your genes. I don't want to be where you are unless you get that MMR. Don't want no rash of lumps. Stop some measles and the mumps But what's that third one's name? In Germany it came to fame Kevin 
That's Rubella. Rubella. A, A, A. A, A, A. Kind of fades out. When we all sing, we sing together. Can't play an instrument, whatever. Maybe you can beatbox like a prayer. We could sing Blue Moon or I'll Be There. I'm the only alto in my section Trying to achieve that pitch perfection When we're in tune, we're sounding sweller I love it when we're singing Liz So, having gone to Brown, I feel really qualified to answer this question Because we had 12 acapella groups Yes, yes, you did Acapella is correct All right, here we go Whoops, okay, I gotta remember how this goes you can drive or take a plane But what's better, high-speed train Come visit me There's some distance in between our homes So let Amtrak be your guide A 100 mile per hour ride Liz? Acela. Acela is correct. <laughs> That song's huge between Trenton and Newark. <laughs> Sing it all the time. Usually you have to pause the song in New Haven, though, because they have to switch over. <laughs> little train joke, little train joke. <laughs> little Amtrak humor. Little Amtrak yeah. humor. <laughs> when you make crepes and you need a filling, this chocolate spread is always willing. When it's on my toast, I love it so. Hazelnut skim milk and yeah, cocoa. Peanut butter chunks are not so clever I think that I could eat this bread forever When I get a craving I can't dwell I dip my finger in that Kevin Nutella Yeah People knew it from the first word out of your mouth It's a chocolate spread There are not too <laughs> many like, chocolate I'm spreads it. out there did it, oh, I should say, this is your last question. <laughs> Did it wash my hands after handling chicken? Cause my poor cut's taking a licking. I don't want to deal with this malaise On the floor by the toilet for several days Will you eat that again or never? I know it's not serious, however I can't go bowling cause I don't feel well Cause I am infected with... Liz! Salmonella. Salmonella is correct. I think that might be, might be my favorite line from all of these on the floor by the toilet for several days. <laughs> Just very descriptive. It really paints a picture, you know? Yes. Art Chung, how did our contestants do? They did hella good. Liz, you're moving on to our final round. Congratulations. <laughs> Say hello to our next contestants, Christopher Rogers and Camelia Stan. So the game we're going to play is called More or Less. So I'm going to ask you, Camelia, what's something in your life you want more of and something you want less of? So I'm a graduate student, mm -hmm. and we get paid on a federal stipend. So technically, I'm at work right now. Nice. Uh, so I guess I would like more vacation and less work. Yeah. I, I, I'm agreeing with you right now. That's a good plan. Uh, how about you, Christopher? Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, just like in a general theme, like more honesty, more directness. You know, let's just, let's all just hug. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Wait a second. More honesty, more directness. Yeah. Less what? Uh, less Instagram sunsets. <laughs> I am totally with you there. Our next game is called More or Less. We'll give you the clues to some common words that end in L-E-S-S. -S. But the clues won't exactly be according to the Wiktionary. For example, if I said, after my car got a flat on the highway, I had to walk forever to get to the nearest gas station. The answer would be tireless which doesn't really mean without a tire, but we're pretending it does because otherwise it would be a very boring game. <laughs> so the clues will incorporate both the real definition of the word and the hint to the first part of the word. Are you confused? 
I don't think so. No? Great. All right, let's play. I looked everywhere for my missing mangoes, oranges, and pears, but my search was in vain. Camelia. Fruitless. Fruitless, exactly. Who removed the binding of my book? What cowards? Camelia. Spineless. Spineless is right. If the Supreme Court lost Justice Ginsburg, it would have no compassion. Lost Justice Ginsburg? Uh, Christopher. Heartless. What's that? Heartless. No, no, no. Uh, the one that got drunk at the State of the Union. There's your hint. I have no idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We were looking for Ruthless, as in Justice Ruth Ginsburg. I thought that baseball movie was so boring. It had no soundtrack, and the final game ended in a 0 0 tie. Christopher. Scoreless. That's right. I went to the grocery store without a plan, and now I've got no energy to do anything. Listless. Camelias. Listless. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> they removed the stairs? Well, how do I get to the second floor? I don't have wings. Christopher. Flightless? Flightless, you got it. When Dracula moved out of Transylvania, it left the country with innumerable opportunities. Bloodless? Camelia. Say that again? Bloodless? Blood, no, not bloodless. It's a good, good idea. Can you steal, Christopher? Is it really as simple as jobless? No. We were looking for countless. <laughs> countless. Yeah, that's, that's the correct response. Yep. Uneasy groaning. <laughs> I know. All right, this is your last clue. Continuously playing my violin without a break makes me fidgety. Camelia. I'm going to guess restless. Restless, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's how you get to Carnegie Hall, Camelia. That's how you do it. Puzzle guru Art Chung, how did our contestants do? We got all of them right, more or less. But uh, Camelia is moving on to the final round. Congratulations. <laughs> We're going to go real highbrow now for a game titled Poetic License. Please welcome our contestants, Molly Balakov and John Sherman. Okay, Molly, John, this is a poetry-themed game. And not only that, but we asked our good friend, former U.S. Poet Laureate, Robert Pinsky, to read the clues to this game. So before I go any further, I need you to tell me what is your poetry cred that makes you worthy of a game with a poet laureate? John. I feel about poetry the way I feel about music. Like, I like a lot of it. I like what I know, but I, I don't know oh, a great deal of it. Okay, so you're setting the bar low. Yeah, is what really, you're trying to say. I'm trying to lower everyone's expectations. Okay, got it. No expectations. Yeah. Cool. Molly? Mm, when I was in high school, I had a cassette tape of Anne Sexton reading her own poetry. <laughs> Does that count? That certainly <laughs> counts. Uh, and and how, do you read poetry other than that? Mm, no, I do, occasionally. Yeah? Okay, so this will work. Uh, now, you may have noticed in your travels that many book titles have a nice poetic ring to them, and that's often because the titles are actually taken from poems. So in this game, we're going to read you passages from famous poems, replacing the book title with a clue, and you have to tell us the name of the book. So let's give it a shot. This is from Dylan Thomas's Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the first novel by George R. R. Martin. John. 
Dying of the Light? That is correct, yes. That is a line of poetry, and that is the name of George R. R. Martin's first novel. Yeah. Now, Molly, are you clear? Are you okay? You look yes, puzzled. I was confused by the George R. R. Martin. I thought it was going to be a Game of Thrones thing, but I'm good now. I'm good. Because <laughs> you went there, and then you were like, why am I back here in a poem? Yes, Correct. I understand. <laughs> okay, this is from William Butler Yeats, The Second Coming. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Chinua Achebe's debut novel, The Center Cannot Hold. John. Uh, things Fall Apart. That is correct. <laughs> From Robert Burns's To a Mouse. But Mousy, thou art not thy lane, improving foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes of a John Steinbeck novella about a pair of migrant laborers. Molly. Of Mice and Men? That is perfectly correct. This, I mean, you know, we did go from uh, Umbrella to this. No, it is, no. <laughs> it is quite it's a wide a, range. Yeah, there little... are definitely people who have been listening to the radio all this time who right now are like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh. From Lord Tennyson's Loxley Hall. Not in vain the distance beacons. Forward, forward, let us range. Colin McCann's National Book Award winner. Forever down the ringing grooves of change. Molly. Uh, late, let the great world spin? Yes! Beautiful. This is your very last clue from Paul Lawrence Dunbar's Sympathy. When he beats his bars and he would be free, it is not a carol of joy or glee, but a prayer that he sends from his heart's deep core, but a plea that upward to heaven he flings the first volume of Maya Angelou's autobiography. Molly. I know why the caged bird sings. You got it. That is correct. Great game. John, I knew that you knew the answer to that one, too, because you rang and they just went, ah, oh. Puzzle Guru Archung, how did these amazing contestants do? Yeah, it was, went down to the buzzer, but Molly, congratulations, you're moving on. <laughs> Coming up, we'll see if our VIPs Jonathan Groff and Raul Castillo can replicate their on-screen chemistry in a game about TV couples. So stick around. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and this is Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for Ask Me Another comes from LearnVest. LearnVest is an online financial advice company focused on empowering people nationwide to make smart decisions with their money. If you want to know how to aggressively pay down your student loans, LearnVest can help with that. If you want to know how much you should put aside for savings or contribute to your retirement account, yep, they're on it. They'll create a custom financial plan, plus they'll pair you with a financial planner to help you keep on track. To see a sample plan and get a $50 credit, go to learnvest.com slash another. Welcome back to Ask Me Another, NPR and WNYC's hour of trivia puzzles and word games. So we like to do this every week on Facebook and Twitter. We ask people to tell us the most interesting piece of trivia they have learned. And we got a nice one from Sarah Raff in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Before 2012, Pizza Hut was the largest purchaser of kale in the United States, but they only used it for garnish around their salad bars. Jonathan, what do you think? True or false? Okay, okay. Well, there's two, there's two opposing forces in the world of kale volume. <laughs> One is that I believe before 2012, kale was not a very popular vegetable. Right now, it's, it seems like everywhere you go, there's kale, there's kale chips, kale crackers. My clothes are made of kale. <laughs> but, then, but then, yeah, Pizza Hut? Pizza, Pizza Hut. Hut. 
It does look like, I mean, if you had to decorate something and you wanted like a green ruffle. Yeah, if you wanted a, if you wanted a, if you wanted a thing that was like lettuce, but much sturdier than lettuce. <laughs> That's right. Do you have less, like laminated lettuce? Do you, Do you have, have like, like a, laminated? Yeah, we got this kale. It's garbage. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Bring we'll, it we'll, on. We'll take all of it. I'm going to say that's true. I'm going to say that's absolutely true. It is kind of true. Kind of. It is kind of true. Oh. Yes, and it, it is basically true. It's just very hard to fact check this. Uh, we went to the librarians at NPR, and they found a cookbook called From Asparagus to Zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> That laugh is in the title, just so you know. <laughs> it was published in 1996, and we spoke to Sarah Tedeschi, uh, who is a farm-to-school outreach specialist from Wisconsin. She co-wrote it and says that she swears that she used reputable sources, but this was before the Internet. Yeah, right. Somewhere there's a ledger of all the kale that was bought. <laughs> it's just one page. It's, it's just Pizza one Hut at the top. Pizza Hut. A big line. And we actually called Pizza Hut. Yeah. To fact check it. Uh, but they said that they'd get back to us in about 30 minutes and we still haven't heard. <laughs> Big moment for all of us to know that we took the kale off of the shelf. We took it back. And put we it took into it our back, mouths. Yes. Gentlemen. Thank you, Sarah Raff, for sending that sort of fact. I am delighted to welcome our very important puzzlers. They play an on-again, off-again couple on the HBO series Looking. Please welcome Jonathan Groff and Raul Castillo. Now, you've both, uh, you've done Broadway, you've done theater, you've appeared on network television, Raul, you've been on Blue Bloods, Law & Order, Nurse Jackie, Jonathan. We know you, of course, from Glee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the voice of Kristoff on Disney's Frozen. <laughs> so the show follows a group of gay men in their 20s and 30s trying to navigate through their life uh, in San Francisco. Jonathan, you play Patrick. Roll, you play Richie. You meet in the very first episode. Uh, and it is a... You meet on the train. Yeah. Uh, and it is a, a really fun, flirtatious pickup scene had you ever met each other before you were working on this? Uh, we met the night before. That was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what happened the night before? <laughs> karaoke happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sang karaoke for the first time. Uh, and I don't do karaoke. And I sang Girls Just Want to Have Fun for Jonathan. <laughs> 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 True story. <laughs> That's good. Do you have a great uh, singing voice role? Oh, it's lovely, yeah. <laughs> We kind of, like, we got, I mean, I don't know, at least from my perspective, we never really talked about it with each other, but from my perspective, we, there was an instant sort of, I felt an instant connection with you. Right. Immediately. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get that all the time, so, you know, it's, it's a blessing when you find it, and, and, and especially when you're going to, I mean, we didn't know what, what it was going to become, and we shot the pilot, and then you go away, and you hope that it gets picked up, and then it did, and... And the way that the relationship, you know, evolved in the season was pretty amazing. But we didn't, we had no idea at that point what it would be. And, but we were, I think we were lucky in some ways that we found great scene partners in yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. And when you're sitting down to shoot the first scene like that, are you saying like a rule? You're like, okay, just, you know, something I want you to know about me. I grew up in Texas. Or are you letting him know? Uh, uh, no, but, but I, I did, uh, I sort of came out to Jonathan as a straight man. And, and that was uh, a... <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, I remember, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, we were shooting the scene, actually, the, the scene that you're talking about in, in, in Muni in, in San Francisco, and we, we had this train, and we were going back and forth, and we were talking about the relationship and the way that people, when they meet, and that, that kind of chemistry, and I, and, I, and I just met Alexis, my girlfriend, so I, I, uh, I was talking... I was kind of making an analogy... Uh, mm -hmm. To that, so that's how I, you know, that's, how <laughs> <laughs> that's how it came up, yeah. Uh. <laughs> and when he came out to his straight, you were like, "We know." <laughs> I we cried a sing. I had a little single tear fall. Do you feel like you are expanding people's uh, ideas of what uh, it is to be gay in America? Are you getting letters from fans that say these kinds of things? 
It's interesting. Like uh, Michael Lombardo, who's the the head of HBO, he made a speech uh, on the stage of the Castro Theater when we had our premiere of the show. And he said, ever since David Fisher, played by Michael C. Hall in Six Feet Under, I have been waiting to make a show about gay people where they weren't tragic figures and they weren't the comedic relief and they weren't sexually sensationalized, but they were just human beings, which is what that character on Six Feet Under was and why that was sort of revolutionary in its way. And so I think, I think it's what we're trying to do is, is show these gay men as human beings you know ultimately and it's been it's been amazing to have like people like strangers on the street will come up to me and talk about open relationships and having affairs and they feel this sort of like um openness with us because we're we're dealing with all those things on the show and i love it i'm all about it i love talking you're like bring it on yeah Ro, what kind of uh, fan mail do you get? I'm sure they send you these sort of things like, keep going and let me know if you ever decide to get rid of your girlfriend. Are you, just, <laughs> are you inundated with that? I get a little bit of that, a yeah. A little bit of that. <laughs> Mostly from me. <laughs> <laughs> we always ask our VIPs to provide a prize to our final winner. Yeah. And you brought a little bit of the show to our show as a prize. Uh, it's an accessory from yeah. the show. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the scapular, Raul? And then I'll read this thing. Um, the scapular, um, Jonathan, for uh, the wrap of the sh of first season, so season one gave everyone gifts. And I got, I went to the Dolores Chapel in San Francisco, and they, I, I didn't know what a scapular was before working on Looking. And then I went and I bought like 150 of them. <laughs> And they were like, why do you want all these scapulars? They were so excited. They were like, are you Catholic? I was like, no, but I, I'm working on this. They thought I was like converting all these people, but it, I was like, don't ask too many questions. Just I'll buy the scapulars. And so I wrote, so it's got this, so it's a, it's this, it's a necklace. And then I wrote on here the quote that Richie says to Patrick. Uh, he says, quote, Someone has to give it to you. It's kind of a... Well, why don't you read it? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, the Scapular Looking Episode 106. Someone has to give it to you. That's kind of the tradition or whatever. It's for good luck. They all... I gave them all away and I had one left that I was going to keep for myself as like a souvenir. But then I was like... Live and let live. I want to give it away. It's amazing. Thank you. Yes. So before we figure out who is the lucky recipient, would you guys like to play a little Ask Me Another game with us? <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Jonathan Groff and Raul Castillo. Your game is called Will They or Won't They? And it's inspired by your character's relationship on looking. Jonathan, you get a list of fictional TV couples who have a will-they-or-won't-they relationship on a television series. Uh -huh. uh, and you have to get Raul to guess the TV show, but you can't use the names of the characters, and you can't use any of the words in the show's title. So if the show was Cheers, and you have written Sam and Diane on your card, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you'd say stuff like alcoholic former baseball player, snooty Boston barmaid... But if you said cheers, Sam or Diane, you would hear this. Yeah, and that means you have to move on to the next one. Okay. And if you get stuck, you can say pass. Okay. You have two minutes on the clock. Two minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's start it now. Okay. Oh, uh, we talk about this couple in episode five. Friends. Yep. Uh, this uh, this uh, was uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and... Uh, Sex in the City? Yeah. Ooh, okay, so this is Julian Anderson. And X Files? Steve, yeah. I uh, never saw the show, but I want to say Josh Whedon did that. It was a TV series. Uh, I, I Want to Suck Your Blood. True uh, Blood? No. No. Uh, no uh, <laughs> if I get really strong, I get really. Uh, uh, Shocked? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> um, uh, it's a, it's it's a, it's four words in the title. Um, not count Dracula. Or Dracula is a vampire. Yeah. The Vampire Diaries. Uh, no. Uh, 
<laughs> you made me laugh so hard, you blanked me. You, you. Sorry. Uh, uh, um, uh, you, can, um, you can move I'm on to pass the for pass. now. Pass. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The, oh, this was a TV show, not a river, but a... Stream? No. Another word. Lake. Uh, no. A Ocean. running brook. It's like a... Um, uh, it's two uh, words. Creek. Yeah. And that's so that word... Creek. ...is uh, the second word. Right, I should And the know first word is a point. name. Um, uh, Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Kermit, and it's... Uh, 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 oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I said the word. Uh, okay, this is a show about doctors. Uh, ER. No. Uh, uh, it's two Grey's words. Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Uh, Lena Dunham's show. Girls. Okay. Oh, oh okay. yeah, oh, that, that was good. Cool. Cool. <laughs> you both win a limited edition Ask Me Not the Rubik's Cube. Nice, thank All you. Right. Thank you. A that. huge hand for Jonathan Groff thank and Rollo Castillo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we're going to crown this week's grand champion. Let's bring back from Thank You Notes, Harmony Barker. From Single Word Cinema Stumpers, David Nickashear. From Hella Ella's, Liz Sterin. From More or Less, Camellia Stan. And from Poetic License, Molly Balikov. Our puzzle guru, Art Chung, will lead this final round titled, Everything Old is New Again. For this final round, every answer will include either the letters N-E-W or O-L-D in order, new or old. For example, if we said, this comedic actress is Kate Hudson's mother, you would say, Goldie Hawn. We're playing the spelling bee style, so one wrong answer and you're out. You only have a few seconds to give me that answer. The last person standing is our Ask Me Another grand winner. And for your prize, you'll win the scapular necklace that Richie gives Patrick in season one of Looking, suitable for your home or office. <laughs> Here we go. Harmony. According to a well-known saying, beauty is in the eye of the what? Beholder. That's right. David. On Seinfeld, Jerry begrudgingly says hello to this neighbor. Newman. Well done. Liz, on this classic game show, recently married couples try matching answers to often naughty questions. Wheel of Fortune. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. S step aside. Camelia, do you know the answer? Newlyweds? No, I'm sorry, that's not exactly the answer we're looking for. Can you fix it? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Or, I'm sorry. Step aside. Molly. Is it the newlyweds game? It is the newlywed game. We'll accept that answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Liz and Camelia. You're out. We are quickly down to three players. Harmony. Hugh Hefner coined this term for a large portrait stuck into a magazine. Centerfold? Centerfold is correct. David, recruited by his brother Donnie, Mark Wahlberg was briefly a member of this boy band. New Kids on the Block. N-K-O-T-B, that's right. <laughs> Molly, according to the Mayo Clinic, while preschoolers are most susceptible to catch this viral illness, even adults get it a few times a year. I'm going to have to say three seconds. Sorry, step aside. Let's see if Harmony knows the answer. A cold? That's right, a common cold. I'm sorry. Thank you, Molly, for playing. We are down to two players, David and Harmony. David, this literary antihero was introduced in J.D. Salinger's short story, I'm Crazy. Holden Caulfield. That is correct. <laughs> Harmony, Jeff Daniels plays troubled TV anchorman Will McAvoy on this HBO series. The newsroom. Good job. Back to David. Appropriately, this was America's oldest car brand until it was discontinued by General Motors in 2004. Oldsmobile. Correct. <laughs> Harmony. This amphibian, closely related to the salamander, can regenerate limbs and internal organs. Wait, you said it was related to the salamander? Closely related to the salamander. I'm sorry, do you have an answer? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Step aside. David, if you know the answer, you're our grand prize winner. Would that be a newt? That is correct. <laughs> David, you are our Ask Me Another Big Winner. Nice job. Well done. 
that is our show. Thanks so much for playing. You can be a puzzle player anytime, anyplace by downloading our podcast from iTunes or Stitcher. If you would like to step up your game and be a contestant, find us on Facebook or Twitter at NPR Ask Me Another. And to see us live, go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Arch Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now Jolta Cannon. Additional puzzle writing by Eric Feinstein, Greg Lightman, Adam Markowitz, Jess Miller, Noah Tarno, and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another's produced by Jesse Baker, Josh Rogeson, Eleanor Kagan, Denny Shin, and our intern Aaron James, along with Portia robertson Migas and Eric Newsom. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore and Kristen Muller. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm Harif Begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Next time on Ask Me Another, Gillian Jacobs tells us what it was like for her and her co-star Kate Micucci to perform improv comedy live for the first time in their movie, Don't Think Twice. You basically, like, threw us on an NBA team and we're like, this is a basketball, go. Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's hour.